Hey guys, Postron here, and today let's talk about the new Torchlight Season 4 Mistville. Torchlight is an ARPG that I've been playing on and off over the last one and a half years, and it's kind of like comfort food in between PoE whenever I get burned out. The new season comes out from whenever this is out, probably a few hours later. I'll put in the time up here, but... In general, I'm really looking forward to this one. I have made some notes. The patch notes are crazy. They're like 25,000 words. So I've basically accumulated everything you kind of need to know here. And I'm also going to talk about just in general what they said throughout the reveal. Also, I will be streaming this over on twitch.tv slash So if you want to come by or try out the game, it's free to play. Check out the stream as well. Now, number one, let's talk about the seasonal mechanic right here. So basically what's happening here is you have sort of a roguelike minigame and you're going to spend your sanity here in the background. In, in general, we don't know much about it, but from what I understand, you're basically spending your sanity to kind of progress through this kind of exploration. And then at the end, you're trying to get to a clock tower and the clock tower will have a big chest at the end where you can drop stuff. One of these things that you can drop now are going to be activation mediums. And we're going to talk about these in a second, but basically what you have here is sort of a mini game that you're going to have per map. So kind of like a normal league mechanic in, for example, PoE. And then you also have sort of a meta progression board right here where you can kind of decide uh, which way you're going to go, what kind of rewards you want. But in general, we don't know much about it. There was quite a few reveals here. But in general, they did focus on quite a few of the other changes. And there have been a ton of changes to these patch notes. I just want to make that clear because the patch notes are insane. And this is one thing that I got to say. This game changes radically from league to league, which I don't know if I like or hate because they don't really have a leg to stand on. It's kind of like hard to know what works, what doesn't work. But they're definitely ambitious. I'll give them that. But talking about these activation mediums right here, what these are are basically replacements for trigger skills. So if you look at the patch notes right here, activation mediums, they are, yeah, basically stuff like cast on crit, cast while channeling, rhythm, all those skills do not exist anymore. However, what you now have are these activation mediums. And they are sort of support gems that will automatically trigger your main skills or your empower skills, your restoration skills, uh, however you want. And it sounds like kind of a sacrifice because you have to give up a support gem. But a lot of these, especially the ones that revolve around your damage dealers, will also give you more damage. So you don't really lose much. And there is a ton of different ones with different conditions. There's even one for sentinels. Uh, there is one for minions, right? There's one for channeled skills, one for spells, one for attacks, one for multi-strike attacks, all the good stuff. And as far as we know, these also only drop from the league mechanic and we don't know how rare they are and if they're weighted because some of these definitely look stronger than some of the others. So this might just be something for endgame, not something you have from the get-go. That being said, I'm a little worried about these. Don't get me wrong, I love the idea of having basically everything be an auto bomber but at the same time all the skills that you used to have as an auto bomber for example savage charge red train um all the channeled skills like whirlwind etc that just had a really smooth feel those seem kind of irrelevant now because you can basically make any skill into that and if every skill gets this amount of convenience and you don't have to cast it anymore the only thing you have to cast are like support skills or something like that then we might get into a situation where well comfiness doesn't matter anymore everything's comfy now and only the numerically highest skills actually matter so the tldr is i'm a little bit lukewarm about these skills but in general um you also can't use stuff like spell burst with these so for spells it might be a huge downside because spells seem kind of balanced around spell burst there's so much support for it currently and then also stuff like for example bombs from bing uh, will also not work with it, most likely. Now, number three is the new hero trait from Erika. She gets the Keta Erika, which is not really revolving around multi-strike anymore. It revolves around shock. And this one is quite complex to figure out, especially because shock is kind of complex. But in general, what this character does is it rewards you once again for stacking movement speed and revolves around shocking yourself and dealing damage to yourself. You can probably mitigate this quite a bit in endgame, but until then, you have to kind of figure out some ways around it. But in general, like I'm not going to explain everything she does right here. Just seems like a very cool character and I'm 99% sure I'm going to start this one. Do note though that for new classes, you have to get the battle pass to play it in the season that it comes out with. One thing I didn't write down, but in terms of monetary stuff, you can now play all the heroes if you have the battle pass as far as I know. So you don't have to buy each one individually. Also, if you're free to play, I think this league, Yuga is going to be completely outrageous. Yuga just got a huge buff right here. So if we look over there, we can see that Yuga actually gets warp speed, which means your clone does now have 
exactly, it doesn't have a limit of how much it casts anymore, and it gets 100% of your bonuses to attack and cast speed. So you basically have a copy of yourself that will actually deal more damage with all the bonuses. I think this is a complete no-brainer, and you're basically like a trigger skill still, because you still can just walk around, uh, but you get all the upsides from, for example, Spellburst. Cool thing about the new Erika class, though, for example, is that, um, so Shock is similar to Impale and PoE. If you don't know, you apply them, and then you can kind of settle them, sort of like Impale stacks. And this character also turns into an auto-bomber later, so you're kind of getting uh, the feel for it. They're really trying to automate the most possible amount, which is obviously also because it's PC and mobile. Now, the next change I absolutely love, which is the introduction of prototype items. This is sort of like what you have in D4, the codex system, which is, I guess, one of the good things about that game. You have kind of baby versions of chase items. So what that means is there are some items in this game that are so ridiculously expensive. Like, uh, think about, I don't know, mage blood, but double as expensive or like even triple in some cases. And getting them will... Like, before you don't get them, you can't really play your character correctly, which used to be a problem. So you had to... You had the same as like in PoE, where you have to go League Starter and then later transition into a different build. And what they did instead is they made these baby versions of chase items. A big thing here, for example, is Cat Dive, the Butterfly Hunting hero memory this one has a baby version that has as a downside 30 to 20 percent less damage depending on your role and that will get you there right you can kind of buy this one first it's also going to be a lot more common and whenever you're ready to upgrade and you have the currency to upgrade then you will have no downside this is just an example there's obviously a lot of these chase items uh sitting around it will make it a lot easier for example for casual players who would never get to butterfly hunting to actually play all these interesting builds and for people who want a smooth progression, they can just farm it later. Then we have the resistance changes. So what's going to happen here is, it used to be that res was capped at 75, just like in PoE, but they now put it to 60, which is obviously, which sounds pretty rough at first. But what they did do is, uh, they also reduced the amount of elemental damage and erosion damage you take to compensate for that. So what that means is basically, you have to only get to 60% res to get the same as before on 75. Now, this also comes with no inherent res reduction during the campaign. So when you finish the campaign, you're not at like minus 60 or something. You are now just going to be at zero and you have to get 60 res. This is going to make it a lot easier, I guess, streamline it, make it easier to itemize into stuff. Uh, you do also lose resistance on gear, but in general, from what I've kind of mapped out, it's still going to be easier to get res kept down, which leaves more options for some of the more more interesting stats right which were before not really usable because you had to sacrifice so many suffixes for resistances there is one slight downside to this though which is that stuff like maximum resistances is not as good anymore for example if you get five maximum resistances and you go from 60 to 65 that is nowhere near the efficiency as going from 75 to 80 and there are some instances where they actually buff this but not all of them so some of them are actually just worse than they were before. And then stuff like damage conversion. So for example, take uh, physical as fire damage is now not going to be as good anymore because they didn't adjust the fizz damage. So the fizz damage is still like it was before, which now goes against your 60 res instead of your 75. So they did all also compensate for that across the board. You now get more of this stat, but depending on your armor, it might not actually be a downside. Another thing they added is sort of a better beginner experience. So the first thing they did was set items. Now, I personally paid set items but from what i understand these are only meant for early to mid game to kind of give you a little bit of a power spike uh, maybe while you don't have the means or the knowledge to craft your own items and you, you can also target farm these uh in end game and maps with cards and whatnot but in general if this is truly only like a mid game kind of thing i think it's fine it is really hard to beat good rares anyway so i don't really suspect there's going to be anything about that but uh, set items in general, if they're only used as a progression tool, fine. Now, there's also more chance to get legendary items during the campaign. And there's also going to be certain side areas when you can kind of like catch up with EXP and get extra uniques in case the campaign is too hard for you. And the last change is kind of a big one as well, the aura changes. So you used to have three passive slots right here where you could basically put in as many auras as you can fit. If you have like enough energy, you could fit like 10, 12, whatever, however many auras in here and as long as you had the reservation or life reservation right uh, you can fit them all in now what happened in this patch though is they removed the ability to put more than one active skill in one of these slots but they added a fourth one which means you can technically only have four auras unless you get an aura from somewhere else like for example boot slot or something 
But at the same time, so this sounds like a, a huge nerf at the start, but they did revamp how some of these aura scale as well as that they give you a lot more support options for them so i mapped this out on stream actually a little bit and in general i would say this is a straight up buff for most builds this will make it way better to like focus on one or two auras that are just crazy good for your build instead of kind of diversifying there are also supports like this one right here like concentrated you can't the precise version you can't have more than two auras but you get a 125 aura effect. Now, stuff like Spirit Magis and Imbues do not count as auras. So you can still have your two auras that are like insanely buffed, plus like a Magi and an Imbue. And some of these supports are just straight up ridiculous and you can stack them. So if you have the energy to back it up, you can now get like 200-ish percent aura effect without even touching anything on the passive tree. This will also make aura effect from external sources a lot less desirable because you're already getting so much from your support gems. So multipliers will still be good, for example, from talents, but stuff like increased to just adds on top of this will be a lot worse. So while I think this is a big buff to most builds, it is also most likely a nerf to low life builds with seal conversion. So it used to be that you can basically put a ton of auras on your life, you could just put on four auras and then seal conversion support and all of those go on life. Well, now you would have to go aura seal conversion, aura seal conversion. So it's going to be very obnoxious and very awkward and I'm not really sure how low life builds are going to cope with this. Oh, and just in case you haven't heard, co-op is now in the game officially. I have not tried it myself, so I don't really know the experience, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to try it a little bit. So if you wanna jump in with your friends, you now certainly can. Now, there are a ton of other changes. Talking about new uniques, changed uniques. The whole classes have been revamped. Honestly, like I said, I don't know what to think about this. We sat on stream today for four hours and combed through everything. And even then, I couldn't like go into everything on detail. In general, I can link you to this down below if you're really interested. But I think the most important topics I covered in this video. But yeah, I'll be streaming this for at least five to six days. I will make a video once I kind of have a grasp on the new class. It's really hard to kind of know uh, what the hell is going on with a lot of these descriptions, especially because the patch notes are not that well translated. But yeah, hope everybody's going to enjoy the leak. We're going to see how it goes. Might be an absolute auto bomber fest. So probably fun either way. Uh, but with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.